In the old city of Krakow, in the center of the town, there is an area of about six feet surrounded by a brick wall. It is told that in the year 5,123, that's almost 700 years ago, in that very same spot, the ground opened up and swallowed those who stood there before the eyes of a large crowd. And here is the story. The Prince of Poland had his property managed by a Jew whose name was Shlomo. Shlomo had changed his name to Sigmund, Rahman al-Litzlan, and he had left the path of Torah and Mitzvahs. He behaved just like all the other Goyim in town. One day, Sigmund met a Jewish woman who had been married before and decided that he wanted to marry her. To please her family, he promised to get married according to halacha, to Jewish law. So, Sigmund went to see the Rav of the town, Reb Yitzchak. Rabbi Yitzchak, I wish to get married according to Jewish law. Very nice, very nice. I'm very glad to hear that. And uh, when will the wedding take place? Who will you be marrying? Do you have a caterer yet? What about the photographer? After asking Sigmund a few questions, he soon discovered that Sigmund was a kohen. Oh, I'm sorry, Sigmund, but according to Jewish law, a kohen may not marry a woman who has been married before. Rabbi, I will gladly give up my privileges as a Kohen in order to get married. I'm sorry, Sigmund, but the laws of the Torah cannot be bargained with. I cannot allow you to get married. Sigmund became outraged. Rabbi, I will marry this woman whether you will do it or not. If I have to, I will go to another town and get married there. After Sigmund left the Rav's home, the Rav sent a message to the woman's family telling them that if she would marry him against the Torah law, it would bring nothing but calamity to all those involved. When Sigmund heard that, he decided to fix the problem his own way. He went to the prince and told him all that had happened. The prince promised to take care of the matter. The next day, the prince summoned the Rav to the castle. When the Rav arrived, he found the prince, Sigmund, and the local Galach all waiting for him. Rabbi, why do you refuse to perform the marriage ceremony for Sigmund and his wife-to-be? Dear Prince, I have already explained to Sigmund that he is a Kohen and that he could not marry someone who has been married before. The Prince then turned to the Galach and asked him, Is what the Rabbi said true? Well, yes it is. However, the rabbi has the power to change what the Torah says. I'm sorry, but the Torah laws were given to us by Hashem and can never be changed. Royal Prince, listen to me. He has the power to do so. Very well. That's good enough for me. I will rely on what the Galach has said, and I command you to perform the wedding. Your Highness... I would carry out your order with pleasure, if it were not for the fact that I am obligated to answer to a higher authority, namely the creator and king of the universe, Hashem. Do you take me for a wimp? We shall see! A few days later, a group of armed men appeared at the rabbi's door. They had been sent by the prince to bring the Rav to the marketplace to perform the wedding. When the Rav arrived at the center of the town, there were many people gathered, waiting to witness this unusual event. The Rav spoke up for all to hear. I will not permit this Avera to take place, even if it means giving up my life. I beg of you to give up your wicked ways and return to the ways of Hashem. But the couple just ignored the Rav's words and began to scream at him. The Rav then lifted his hands towards Shemayim and cried out, Hashem, for the sake of your holy name, look down from Shemayim and you be the judge. The Rav barely finished when the ground began to tremble. Suddenly, the ground opened up under Sigmund and the woman. And before anyone could react, the ground swallowed them up and 
just as quickly the earth closed up again, as if nothing had happened. Everyone was trembling in fear, just staring at the spot where the ground had opened. The news quickly reached the castle. Oh no! Quickly send for the Galach! I must know how to ask the holy rabbi for forgiveness! When the messengers arrived at the home of the Galach, they found him behaving like a Meshuggana. He was knocking his head against the wall and mumbling. As soon as he had heard that the Rav had davened and that the ground opened up, he went absolutely crazy. Oh no, oh no, oh no, what's going on? This is crazy, this is unbelievable, this is outrageous. Ah, who took my sussy? Who took my sussy? Where's my sussy? Ah, a spider! Oh no, what am I gonna do? Oh, I, I wanna just cry, I wanna just laugh. This is. A... Come here, come here, come here, come here, get away, get away, get away, get away, get away. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, get away, get away, get away, get away. Rabbi, I'm so sorry. I did not mean to disrespect you or your religion. Well, your highness, I myself forgive you how you treated the Torah. I'm sure it was out of ignorance and you did not mean it. But I do have one small request. Yes, Rabbi, anything. Just you name it. Well, a Kohen may not walk on top of a grave. Would you please order that a brick wall be placed around the spot where the ground has opened up? To prevent anyone from walking there. The prince readily agreed and the brick wall has remained there ever since. <laughs>